Watch this. No. Bye. Enjoy this video. I've returned and today because of the help of a handsome fella we will learn how to make a bomb timer for Counter-Strike 2. This timer will count down from 40 seconds as soon as it finds out that the bomb is planted. It utilizes in Google so you can design it however you want. This project is quite simple and I think you will enjoy it. If you want to become a supporter of this channel and also get access to instant source code then I suggest you check out the coffee page or even perhaps subscribe, like or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the discord server in the description. But remember comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. Welcome to today's showcase. We will start by taking a look at the final project that you will have. You can see that it's not a lot, 60 lines of logic, and we essentially just read the game rules, read the bomb planted bullion, and start a timer from that point. Let's take a look at it in game. So, before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam. Under the game Counter Strike 2, we will right click on the properties, we will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So, incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking, checking a map, and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. Okay, so instead of a practice game on Mirage, we will click the play button of our final project. And if the offsets are updated, if the logic is fine, we will have a little window saying bomb is not planted and when we plant the bomb, the bomb. Doot, doot, doot. bomb planted seconds before about the blow 35 34 33 32 and so on get out of here you can move the window around let's see when it explodes Four, three, two, one. Goodbye. Okay. And the bomb is not planted anymore. Let's check the city side. So the bomb is planting, and we see bomb planted. Thirty-seven, thirty. So stop. No. All right. I wanted to defuse, but. And the bomb timer is off again. All right, let's let's actually make this. We will create a new C# -sharp console app with the .NET 
framework 8. After that, we will set the build type in the project settings to 64 bit. Now that the project is set, we will install from the NuGet package manager clickable transparent overlay, the version 9.1.0, then my beautiful memory library, Sweat64. Okay, we're ready to create some code. We will have a new class, a renderer class that will handle the drawing or the bomb text and so on. This class will be using clickable transparent overlay and imgui net. After that, we will inherit the overlay to the renderer class. And because we inherit the overlay, we will have to implement the protected override of the void render. This is the place where all of your drawing will happen. Let's add some class variables. We will have two colors, one for when the bomb is planted and one for when it's not. The first color will be the red color. We will define it by the RGBA structure or what can be a vector 4 since it has four values. Then the green color, also a vector 4 with the RGBA structure. Then we have two variables, which will be the bomb planted and the time left. In the render method, we will create a new window with imgui begin. Then check if our bomb planted boolean is true. If that's the case, we will create a new text colored with the green color and then bomb planted. We will also have a text that says seconds before about to blow with our time left variable so it counts down dynamically. Now, if the bomb isn't planted, we will just have a default text saying that it's not planted with our red color. Okay, we're done with the GUI part of the video. We will move into our program.cs file and add using sweat64 then initialize the sweat library with the CS2 process. After that, we will get the client module with sweat.get module base and then the client.dln. This is because the addresses are relative to the client module. Then real quick, create an instance of our renderer class and run it within a render thread. Then we will need some fresh offsets, so we will head into the CS2 dumper by A2X. Credit goes to him for this beautiful CS2 dumper where we can get freshly updated offsets. We will head into the offsets.cs file and grab the DB game rules. Then we go into the client.dln.cs file, also under the generated folder. Here we get the B bomb planted boolean under the CS game rules object, not the C4 weapon. All right, let's create the timer loop. We will have a while true statement so it always runs, and inside of this we will read the game rules. So we use the sweat dot read pointer with the client module, then the DV game rules offset. We will have a quick check that the game rules pointer does not equal zero. I made a typo here. We will fix it at the end, so don't worry about it. But it should be does not equal to. For this to work, we will have our very own boolean, bomb planted boolean. We will define it above the while loop. Then we assign the value of the bomb planted boolean with sweat.read bool using the game rules and the bomb planted offset. So if the bomb is planted, we will have a true here. If that's the case, we will start a timer from 40, counting 40 seconds down from when it initially started. This means if we figure out that the bomb planted is true in a later state of the bomb placement, it will give us a false countdown. So it's essential that this loop is run before the bomb is planted. 
Now, because the bomb planted state can change, someone defuses it or whatever could happen, we will read the boolean for every second. If it's not planted, we will break the loop. Now, to calculate the time left, we will take the initial time of the bomb to blow, 40 seconds, and subtract the seconds passed by, so minus i. But because we want our GUI to have the same values, we will have to update them through here. Let's go back to the else statement before and add the time left to have a negative one, indicating that it's not planted and the bomb planted to false. Okay, let's fix some errors. The first one will be the game rules does not equal an int pointer dot zero, very important. Then place the else statement behind the correct bracket. It should be of the bomb planted if statement. All right, let's try it out in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. All right, so in a practice game on the map Mirage with some bots and the don't shoot command for the bots enabled, we will test our project. Here we have the tutorial. If everything is fine, if the up offsets are updated and the logic is the same, we will have a bomb timer, and once we plant the bomb, doo -doo -doo, bomb planted seconds before about to blow. 36, 35, 34. Let's uh, speed that through. 13, 12, 11, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. One. Perfect. Bomb is not planted. It works as intended.